Welcome to Kingdom News on God's Own TV. Today on Kingdom News, a reason I love directing my mom in movies, Dam Lola Mike Bamiloye reveals. I tap from this blessings. Reactions over three generations of the Mike Bamiloye family. Let Osunachi's family fix dates for burial. Must you cry? J. Mikey calls out six month old son, Jason Mike Bamiloye. Hmm. I just discovered something phenomenal. <gasps> something phenomenal. Yes, something phenomenal. Phenomenal. Joshua Mike Bamiloye has called out his six-month-old son, Jason Mike Bamiloye, for always crying before he sleeps. Joshua, who took to his Twitter page to tell his followers, said his son was always serving, servicing the ears of his parents while he tries to sleep. It would be recalled that J. Mikey became a father on the 22nd of December 2021. The movie maker who is now living in the reality of the myth about children crying to sleep said though he loves babies, he still cannot fathom why they would have to cry before they sleep. In his words, I love babies and young children, but you see that but you see that moment when they cry and throw tantrums because they want to sleep, I will never understand. You want to sleep? Close your eyes and sleep far. Why are you fighting it? Jason Mike Bamloye had earlier received his first car and mobile phone gifts. This was made known by J. Mikey. See the video of the gifts. picture containing the three generations of the Mike Bamiloye's family has been spotted online as this was uploaded by the popular music minister evangelist Lawrence Oyo on his official social media page. In a single shot the, the complete family members as a 30th of May 2022 were seen in the picture. The picture has in it evangelist Mike Bamiloye and his wife Gloria Bamiloye, Damilola Mike Bamiloye and his wife, Emanuela Mike Bamiloye, with their two daughters, Glory and Grace. Also in the picture were Joshua Mike Bamiloye and his wife, Tolulokwe, with their son, Jason, and finally, Evangelist Lawrence Oyo and his wife, Tarasimi, and their son, Elijah Lawrence Oyo. The lovers of this family have, however, taken to the comment session to celebrate the family while using them as a point of contact for such blessings. Tapping into the Mike Bamloye's blessings at Miss Pressy said, The moment I saw the picture, I started singing in faith, my marriage will be a blessing. My children surround my table. I will see my children's children. So say the Lord of hosts. At Asemota blessing on her own part said, one big family of God, I tap to this family of God. At Ajiboye Oreolua said, I love the family when God was saying your children shall surround your table. Using the Mike Bamiloye family as a point of contact into receiving our own marital blessing, at Joseph Oreo declared, I tap into this grace and option of a Christian home. I receive divine marital direction in Jesus' name. God bless this family, expand more and more, and keep in Jesus' name. Amen. You notice? Yesterday. Be me. Hmm. I know a pastor, a man of God, who is a specialist in ministering to barren women. 
I'm not buried. Gospel filmmaker and producer Damilola Mike Bamiloye has revealed one of the sweetest things he enjoys while directing movies. The father of two said it always gives him pleasure to direct his mother in any movie project. He said he always appreciates the time spent directing his mother, Gloria Bamiloye, because it is always a special moment. Damilola made us known when he shared a photo of himself with his mother walking on set on his Instagram page. According to him, it is always a time and an opportunity for him to instruct his mother to do some things as he does not have the opportunity to do so in real life. In his words, directing my mom is one of the sweetest things I love doing because it's about the only time I get to tell her mom, do it this way. No, you can't have it that way. No, it must be this way. Watch out for this powerful movie to be unveiled soon. Note that since Dam Lola Mike Bamloe become a director, he has had several opportunities to work with his mother and father, Evangelist Mike Bamiloe. The co-host of True Talk Show, Emanuela Mike Bamiloe, has revealed an important lesson her first daughter taught her about building an, an intimate relationship with God. According to her, her daughter Gloria always wears a look of satisfaction whenever she finished eating. In her words, there is this look of satisfaction my daughter Gloria has every time she finishes eating. She gets up and begins to play, but after a couple of hours, it's like she never ate in the first place. Her satisfied, hungry circle has taught me a great lesson. Explaining what the lesson is, she said, It is a very good thing when we feed our spirit man with God's word and are satisfied, but it is foolish to bank on what you ate yesterday. If the body has to be constantly fed, how much more our spirit? We are surrounded by things that can drain us, hence the need to constantly reform. Even if the full tank of a car is full, as long as it is driven, it must be constantly refilled. A lamp must always be charged for it to keep shining bright. She then gives a piece of advice to believers never to bank on yesterday's encounter, continually go to God for more because in God, no matter the depth or height you have attained, there is always more. Emanuela Mike Bamiloye, who is a gospel actress and scriptwriter, is married to the gospel filmmaker Damilola Mike Bamiloye, and they are both blessed with two daughters, Gloria and Grace Mike Bamiloye. doing i'm sure we're doing well we just want to encourage you not to use social media as a yardstick to validate yourself mm -hmm. or as a yardstick to you know determine your self-worth self social media is not the standard because mm -hmm. you're only shown what they want you to see you mm -hmm. will never you will never be shown the dirty past <laughs> or the you know upbringing or they are making no mm -hmm. so don't use social media to validate yourself, yourself. Yeah. yeah so let your validation come from 
the from word of God, God and God. you know you trust the process that God is taking you through because exactly. everybody has you know everybody's going through their own process mm -hmm. your process cannot be the same as somebody yeah, else yeah. so just you know walk with the Holy Spirit to take you through the process of growth mm -hmm. and you know trust the word of God what does God say about about, about you, you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. one of the things that comparison does it's you know it brings it brings pressure mm -hmm. and it can also make you sad and happy with depression mm -hmm. so yeah. you don't want to fall into that category of yeah. you know I saw this person or this is online and I'm not happy mm -hmm. because I don't have it just let your standard be based on word of God what God is about you mm -hmm. and be grateful for what you have yes be grateful be grateful, have, be grateful yeah. because the person you are seeing and what they're showing you don't know where god has brought them mm -hmm. from yeah the struggles they've had in the past so because yeah. there's this tendency when you see people you know posting stuff about oh, oh my god why why when is mine like it? exactly <laughs> where did i get there why is mine mm. different why mm. don't i have these things yeah. but you don't know how far they've come or where god has yes. brought them from yeah. so just you know trust god for your time and be grateful for what you have be content the bible says godliness with contentment is great, great gain. Gain. Yes. so please trust your process of growth mm -hmm. trust god's process and yeah. taking you to where he would have you mm -hmm. be and to what you've been aspiring to be <laughs> so we love you we love you. love you bye, bye. pastor jerry aze of the nigerian online prayer platform new season prophetic prayers and declarations nsppd has hit a record on its online platforms. In the past six months, the online prayer meeting has recorded a whooping 81,439,509 views on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and MixCLR. Going by the statistics collated from the digital platforms between December 2021 and May 25, 2022, 19 million five thousand. 969 devices have logged on to the NSPPD early morning prayer programs with the estimation of 244,318,527 people are 3% per device. With this new record, the NSPPD is now arguably the largest prayer program in Africa and maybe in the world. A further breakdown of the data also revealed that the NSPPD program had 14,694,805 views in December with an estimated 44,084,415 participants logged in with 3,126,168 devices. Meanwhile, January recorded an estimate of 15,158,333 views from 3,465,059 devices across the globe with a number of 45,474,999 participants. The number, however, lowered to 13,830,965 views and 41,492,895 people. The founder of the NSPPD, Pastor Eze, has since said the milestone is the move of God. He stated, I was quite surprised and overwhelmed by this strange act of God. I can only describe it as what God cannot do does not exist it is not about us it's just about end time revival after a long wait due to various investigations and autopsy the family of the late gospel singer Osunachi Onwachuku has fixed a date for a barrier. Osunachi's family reportedly fixed the 25th of June 2022 for the barrier of the Ekweme singer. Report reveals that the deceased family insisted that Osunachi would be buried in her father's compound at Isuochi Abbey Estate instead of her husband's house as expected. According to BBC Ego, the family are also contemplating returning the singer's bride price. The news of Osunachi's death broke on April 8, 2022, leading to a wild public outcry. 
Osnachi was said to have died as a result of domestic violence she suffered from her husband, Peter Onwachuku. Meanwhile, the federal government had slammed homicide charges against Peter. Recall that the Attorney General of the Federation had dragged Peter before a Federal Capital Territory High Court where he will be facing a 23 count charges, which includes homicide, physical and psychological abuse, restraining of freedom, among others. It was terrible and frightening. The Lord in his mercy made it a dream and not a reality. Evangelist and founder of the Mount Zion Ministries, Mike Bamiloye has revealed the language in which God spoke to him with when he discussed rapture with him. The drama minister said that when God spoke to him about rapture, he didn't communicate with the English language, rather he spoke Yoruba to him. Bam who disclosed that God spoke to him in a dream he once shared last year said, In the dream, we were rounding up a big program and a man of authority came to us with haste and urgency to inform us about the rapture. He spoke in Yoruba language saying, Babatin reti nyo, babatin reti nyi gon nyo, iba kuba ni wole, ronche lati wa ko nyo, babatin reti nyo. In English, it means Baba is expecting us seriously. The gospel filmmaker who expressed his disappointment also explained why he was disappointed. He revealed he had thought the rapture was already taking place at that point, adding that the thought of waiting and holding on longer made him sad and afraid. In his words, in the dream, I was disappointed because I thought he had been sent to come and carry us. I was worried about holding on again till a rapture would eventually come. I was afraid and in tears because if he comes now, many people will miss it. Bamiloye then concluded by saying, May we not miss his coming. As part of his efforts to deliver the message, evangelist Mike Bamiloye had in May 2021 released a one-man presentation titled Rapture Nightmare, available on Damlola Mike Bamiloye's YouTube channel. Are you ready for the second coming of Christ? As part of the activities to mark the first anniversary of the death of the founder of Synagogue Church of All Nations, the epitaph of Prophet T.B. Joshua will be unveiled on Sunday. This was revealed by Mr. James Akibe, the church spokesperson. According to the statement issued by the church, the essence of the epitaph is to allow the members have a sweet memory of their late founder. The statement says, through the unveiling of the T.B. Joshua's museum and foundation, most of the good things he represented while he was alive will be continued. In addition to the epitaph would be a museum and a foundation to immortalize the late man of God who died on June 5th, 2021. The church said the museum will have works, prayers, sermons and thoughts of the late cosmopolitan philanthropist that would make people feel the passion of true love and worship as epitomized by T.B. Joshua through his foundation, his humanitarian service that has been on hold since his demise will be reactivated to serve indigent people in society. With the establishment of the two entities, the vision and passion of our founder will be revived for posterity, said the statement. Prophet T.B. Joshua, whose sudden death shocked his followers all over the world, was buried in July 2021 amidst cries and mourning. His wife, Pastor Evelyn Joshua, has since replaced him as the leader of SCOAN. 
Nigerians continue to prepare for the general elections in 2023, popular pastor known for his prophecies and predictions, Primate Ayodele, has revealed the fate of Mr. Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of Labour Party. Speaking in a statement signed by his media aide, Oluato Sinosho, Primate Ayodele revealed that the former governor of Anambra State will not become the next president of Nigeria. The leader of INRI Evangelical Spiritual Church, who described Obi as a fantastic leader, advised that he drops politics to help Nigerians in other capacities. He said there is no way Peter Obi can contest and win. It's either he resigns from politics or wastes his money. Better still, he should help Nigerians that are suffering with his resources. It will be recalled that Obi had last week resigned from the People's Democratic Party PDP and joined the Labour Party, blaming it on recent developments within the former party. The man of God then continues by saying he was misled into joining the Labour Party to pursue his presidential ambition. He has missed it. Igbos have missed it already. Their generations to come will remain Remember this and curse them. The Southeast political leaders have successfully jeopardized the chances of the Igbos and turned the zone to something else. Ramit Ayodele concluded by saying that the Igbos have no leaders and that they don't like themselves at all. Peter Obi is a fantastic leader, but he cannot become the next president of Nigeria. Any party that gives him tickets will be a waste of time.